At what age did you notice graffiti? And at what age did you start doing graffiti? The age that I noticed graffiti was, uh, I was seven, so that was 1977. Okay. And I was in the Bronx, in the North Bronx at that time. You know, obviously growing up with my mom, so. And when did you start doing oh, graffiti? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. and, when, and when I started painting graffiti, uh, I started actually being a part of that community in 1983 when I started uh, actually going out and with my friends and tagging around the block. That's how everyone started back then. You know, you picked a name for yourself and um, you went out and you tried it, you know, um, in the neighborhood first. And uh, then a year later, I actually physically started painting trains with some guys. A guy that was older than me took me to paint my first train. And his, his tag was Michelob. Yeah. Um, would you say you have any influences? Oh, tons of influences. I have tons of influences. Um, in those early days, as, uh, as far as when I was just watching the subways and I wasn't a practitioner at that time, I was looking at like uh, guys that was a lot older, um, or they seemed a lot older at that time, like this one guy, Blade. Um, he, he's a prolific graffiti writer, even back then. Um, there was guys like Min, RTW, uh, just trying to recall those names. Uh, I love the work of a guy named Spin because uh, his work was, uh, you know, even though it, it, it still had that um, urban feel, as people would say, that graffiti-esque, right? Um, you could read it. So you could read it, like he, he did a lot of pieces on the train, you could read it and he did like a nice character next to it. And uh, it was very readable, it was easy for me to understand because I didn't really know what was going on. Um, and then there was just a lot of other people who just, just really were getting their name up. Um, a big influence back then is a guy named Rolio and he was actually from my neighborhood in the North Bronx, um, a neighborhood called Allerton Avenue which was a, a really mixed neighborhood. It was like Italian, um, uh, Puerto Rican, Jewish, you know, um, when I was growing up around that time. Um, do, you, um, do you have like different approaches to when you do your commercial work, to when you do your artistic work, like say in the gallery or that, like do you, are you forced to use different approaches or do you use different approaches to doing that type of uh, work? Um, what approach I use to doing uh, commercial work or fine art work? I think there's, there's several approaches. I mean, you know, I've been painting now for 38 years and I think, yeah, sure, I would say so. Um, if you do, you know, to just be right, be direct, uh, commercial work, you're working for a client trying to you know you know do a job professionally as you can and you're doing exactly what they want so uh a lot of times you have to use um i would say things that you might have learned in art school or things that uh have been in the traits for a long time you know uh like you know if you're painting a portrait for instance you you would use the, a grid technique you know um you might use a projector um, you might use a, a chalk line. So in the commercial world, you use a lot of things to do the job in the best of your ability or beyond your ability. I think when, you, when you're doing fine art or you're doing yourself, finding yourself as an artist, not that you don't use some of those uh, traits, but you, you tend to be a little bit more free or because you could make a mistake but then that mistake becomes part of your style. Some might call that funny. Or, you know, let's say, uh, you know, um, because, because, you know, this, everyone has these mannerisms, right? And there's things that you do, uh, meaning me, that a lot of guys might not do that's not correct in, 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 in creating, you know, um, no matter how hard I try to get that line straight, it might not be straight. No matter how hard I try to do an arrow, like the next guy, the guy that 
inspire me, the guys that I'm looking at. But but because 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 the way I'm born and where I'm from, and and maybe that guy was lefty, but I'm righty. I can't get that arrow like him. But then but then that arrow, those faults become your style. You know, obviously you don't really um, learn these things till way later. You know, you know, you spend 10 years doing something, 20 years, 30 years, you begin to look back and you see a lot of things. And also those, those mistakes, you get better at them. This, you're still making them, but you've refined those mistakes. So, yes. So would you say then, with your artistic work as opposed to commercial work, the artistic work, you're extending your techniques more, uh, like you're learning uh, to be an artist that you want to be more through your artistic work. Yes, uh, through my artistic work, or fine art work. Yes, you, 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 you're trying. You know, you're trying to find something. You know, I mean, in the be in the beginning of just writing and and painting my name, and then evolving it into uh, you know something that was really traditional and good in the '80s. You know, you you copied other guys, but then at, at a some point, you know, uh, even though back then it was forbidden to copy. People would say, don't bite. Don't bite my style. That was like a saying, you know. Um, and, but, but people would bite. I would bite. Other people copied. You've seen people on the stations with their pads. You didn't know who they were. But when the train pulled in, they, they were copying. So if, if, you know, I would, I would say very rare writers can say that they didn't, they didn't copy. But even within copying, you don't want to infringe on somebody's style so much that it looks like this. You still, you want to copy because you like their work, but as, in some way still put um, something, bring something to the table, so to speak. Very, it reminds me of like a, having a hero jazz saxophonist. So you want to learn what they're doing, but then you have to go past it into your own style. Oh, for sure, for sure, yeah. I, you definitely have to, in, in, I think in any genre of, of art you know, or, or sports, what are you going to contribute to the, to, the, to the end game? The end game is to is to to bring something um, to the, to the art form, so the next generation can go. Oh, I really like I really like that he did. Mm. You know, I like that. Mm. That was cool. Mm. You know, people said that was a mistake, but I like that that mistake. You know, and and then maybe they improve on that. And hopefully, mm. they improve. We would hope so. Do you would you say that you have a art philosophy? Um, would I say I have an art philosophy? Not really sure. That, that's quite, you know, that's a very good question. Um, I don't know. I, I, I've never really thought of myself, you know, as a philosopher or anything like that. So, you know, I mean, some people, you know, I've done some, some, uh, some uh, podcasts in the, in the last two years, you know, and people reach out and, you know, they comment and, you know, they're very... Uh, you know, their comments are very positive and they say, oh, that, oh that, that was pretty amazing what you said. And I don't really think of these things as amazing, but I think every artist and, and even um, just in general people, we live different lives, but I feel like a lot of us walk a similar path through life. You know, so I speak, you know, with saying that, I speak from experience. To me, if you speak from experience, then I think people, more people can relate, especially people with common sense. They can be like, oh, well, I like that. that well, I had a similar you know, interaction or an event happened to me like that. You know, there's lots of things, I think, through life that we go through with similar events, similar. You know, it's different, but there's things about it that are almost the same. And, and when you speak about these, uh, incidents or you know events people go oh that's how we relate with each other as humans i feel so but i i, I wouldn't say i'm a philosopher i wouldn't say okay yeah that might be given too much credit to myself well tell me a bit about your trip to winnipeg and what you're going to do at the graffiti gallery my trip to winnipeg okay so um you know i got wind of a graffiti gallery up in winnipeg you know it's, it's uh 2019 now and i think it was 2010, I believe uh, Chino, a friend of mine who's also a prolific writer um, in writing graffiti as well as a journalist, he, he, he came out here 
for a project and also uh, a few other guys from New York. So I was interested in coming out and in 2010 was when um, in my life I decided to take my um, so-called career, even though I had did professional stuff and uh, I've always considered myself to be an artist. I had been painting in the streets for 30 years and what happened was at that point of my life because of uh, jobs and just events and, and lots of travels through Europe and talking to, 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 to fellow artists, you know, we, we noticed we were getting older and we needed to kind of um, now develop a body of work, meaning paintings. Because with graffiti, everything that you do in the streets or in the public will be eradicated. It could be one day, it could be uh, a month, it could be a year, it could be 10 years. I've had stuff, 15 years, you can go to a wall in the Bronx, you're like, oh, that's, that's a Wayne piece he did, you know, mm. in 2005. But with saying that, I made that decision and I got a studio space, and this was one of the first galleries I heard of. And similar peers that had had uh, history as, as me had showcased in this gallery, and I wanted to reach out and see if I can get a show. So here we are nine years later, got the call, we applied for the grant, and um, I'm up here, really excited. Um, I haven't seen much because I've been in the, in the, in the gallery trying to develop the work and, you know, of, you know, things of that nature. So, um, hmm. haven't seen much of Winnipeg so far. Um, do you, would you have any advice for artists starting out? Do you have any, like, is there a certain um, advice you might offer to starting artists? Um, younger artists and, and artists that are, um, are just starting out, lots of things. Um, at this point in my career, I can say a lot of things. You know, you would ask me this 20 years ago, I would have been like, I don't know. But I would say that the, 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 the number one thing or the most important thing to me is, you know, as you develop as an artist or as you get more passionate about your work and maybe do more professional things and get more notoriety, is try to remain humble. You know, every artist you meet has um, information and insight from their career that can also inspire you to be a better artist. So in building artist community, we need to just have dialogue. And with dialogue, you become a better artist. That's, that's what I feel. So I think remaining humble is a good thing because, because you learn more. So that's my main reason, I think, for being humble. Um, other things I would say is a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. A lot of practice and, and also being an artist is taking a lot of risk, many risks. That's the, the reason why when we started painting graffiti, from painting, uh, when I started painting graffiti, you had to paint graffiti illegally. There was no sanctioned place to go and do graffiti. Like today, this, you, can, you can find uh, what we call gray area places or places that they allow you to paint. You know, um, if, if in Graffiti Gallery, you can come here and say, hey, you know, I'm trying to start out as an artist. You got a space on the wall and you guys might say, oh yeah, you know, like go around the, the corner. There's a space right there, there's a little nook in the wall. You know, have at it, right? So, you know, to, to, to get back to your question, my thing was like, we, in, in the beginning, it's not like I wanted to paint. I didn't want to paint legally, mm -hmm. as I remember in the early, because you heard so many negative things that happened to, to writers that were painting, because you always had to go out at night in the dark, and you had to go to places that wasn't very, considered very good areas, because that meant less police. So there was a lot of obstacles that you had to deal with. Um, so it was, it was kind of an a intimidating thing. Um, but at some point, you, 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 you know, in anything in life, you have to take the jump. So I took the risk and got, got with some buddies and, and started going out. And, and, and from those early guys, got with some older guys that was better, had more experience, which, which was great because, because uh, all around it was great to be with a more experienced uh, writer. And I learned more quicker 
because these guys are more experienced. Even though it was, they were only two or three years older, but when you're, when you're, when you're 13 or 14 and some guy is 17, that's, that's, that's a, a pretty huge gap. Um, so, you know, um, you know learn, we're learning to take risk. I feel like in, in doing graffiti, uh, in my art career, I've always, you know, when I, when I feel my, in, you know, in my gut, it's time to make a move to do something like, okay, now I'm gonna do fine art. Or I was invited to Europe in, in uh, my first time in 1991. And I get a letter from a European guy and he says, oh, you're invited to a festival. We'd like to invite you. Invite? What do you mean invite? Yeah. You know? So I wrote back, hey, what, what, uh, what would I be doing there? And he said, you'd be just doing what you do in the Bronx. The only thing is people will be watching you. Because back then, no one would really, I mean, yeah, sure, if you were painting in the daytime, and people saw you painting in the daytime, they'd watch you. Like, first time, like I mentioned Rolio before, he was an older writer from my neighborhood. I hung out with his younger brother, and that's how I got to know who he was. And he had a lot of works on the subways. Long story short, one day, come out to the block to play stickball with, with, with his brother Vince, and Rolio was painting a box truck on the block in broad daylight in 1983 there was a crowd of people around him, watching. And this is New York City, okay? Tons of things are always happening in New York. But even back then, you didn't physically see anyone. You wouldn't see the process. All you saw was the finished work rolling by on the subways. That's why people were in amazed at what, what is this? What's going on? And people had questions. But if you didn't, if you didn't know these guys, and, and most of these guys, like myself later on, because it was looked down upon, you didn't really, if you wasn't in the community of writing, you didn't really speak about it. Hmm. So pe people tend to, you know, your, your, your critics were your people that went to work every day on the subway. You know, they would see the work roll in the station. And you had some people that loved the work. You had a lot of people that hate the work, hmm. right? But nonetheless, your critics are right there. And you could be right there next to them standing there going, and they're wondering who, who did this? But you're standing right next to them on the platform, waiting for the subway, just like they're waiting to, to go to your destination. So, so yeah, you know, um, I, I, I feel like, you know, you gotta, you gotta take risk out there. You gotta take risk. Risk is what's gonna do it. Practice is, 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 is one of the most important things. Um, and trying to find, uh, a, you know, someone that would mentor you is, was also a big thing back then. So if, if you can find that person that would take the time to show you some things, even if they don't physically show you how to paint, just, again, conversation, dialogue, amounts artists, you can learn so much. All right, we'll wrap it up with the last question. What are your future plans? Uh, future plans really, for me, is, is to you know, I've, like I said, now five years, no, yeah, I think it's about five years I've been, you know, I have a studio space and I've been creating, you know, a body of work. I've been doing shows. Um, so I'm really trying to concentrate on uh, still finding myself as a more fine artist. Like, you know, um, something like this is the direction I'm going. I'm deconstructing, you know, the foundation of graffiti letters. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into geometric shapes. So these things are starting to tell the story. These things are being refined. Um, so, you know, with that being said, is to, to develop as many pieces as I can, get, get a studio space and really work on huge pieces. Because the, the one thing with, with graffiti is, it's, it's, it's taking the world by storm. You know, and guys like myself and guys that have been around way before this thing has happened, has seen the growth and seen the evolution and how amazing it is. How can it go from one or two cities in, in a very small area to now, if you, if you travel the world, if you go to New Zealand, there's, there's, a, there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a whole culture. 
There's guys that have learned from the rest of the world, developing their own style. You know, Tahiti, you can go as far, I was just in, in China, this guy's starting to paint there. Um, and to see when I started that there was basically nothing, just New York, maybe Philly, to, to the rest of the world, that it's, 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 it's just amazing. But it's hard for people to see because a lot of people think, oh, it's new, what's new, it's new. You know, and they think the festivals are new. I'm like, no. You know, I was going to Europe in 1991. In Europe, they were, they, they were doing the festivals. They were ahead. Artists saw what was going on and, and developed, you know, uh, organized these festivals and invited uh, other artists from France and Sweden and, and Amsterdam. I mean, um, yeah, Holland and, and Germany is huge, you know. And the thing about the early festivals, just that that's important, just as great as the festivals now, is artists get together and talk about art and learn from each other, even though they don't know it. You know, they when artists get together, things happen. When people get together, things happen. It doesn't have to be art. So, um, the thing is, uh, you know, this is still, uh, even though people go, oh yeah, you know, these guys are old school and, or whatever. The art form of, of graffiti has evolved so much and it's still in its young, I feel it's still in its young, its, its young days. I feel like, let's say 50 years from now, graffiti is about maybe 40, almost 50 years old. Give it another 50 years, it's gonna, it's already, it's already influenced every form of media meaning graphic design, um, tattooing. Um, you know, even, even artists that, that, that go to uh, art uh, universities, it's influencing them, you know. Um, so it's influencing, it's, it's a modern art form of today. And it's gonna go a lot further. And what people have to remember is where it started. And some of, of, of the things that got it to this point. We can't lose sight of the history. It's very important. We don't lose sight of, of, of history in general. So why should we lose the sight of history with graffiti? You know, you don't have to know everything. No one knows everything, but it's important to, if, if you be a part of this culture, you don't have to go out and paint illegally. I mean, I would love you to, because I'm a purist in that way, but if, if that's not your thing, don't do it. Start off on canvas. You want to be a muralist? There's, there's so many avenues you go, to go. But you can always learn about those that have struggled for the art form because that struggle now has inspired you to do what you're doing. Whether you believe it or not, it's, it's there. It's, it's the DNA. So, you know, learn a little bit about it and you know, so when someone asks you, you can say, well, this is how I started. There was these guys, you know, and um, that's about it. <laughs>